Welcome to Now About the James Bill. Hope you're well. Thanks for joining me. Hope you all had a very good Christmas. Um, I certainly did. I'm back on the boat now. Um, it's night time. It's pretty late. Um, so, uh, but my plan for uh, tomorrow, my parents are coming up tomorrow to see the boat because I haven't seen it since it's kind of been painted and the floor's been down and stuff. And I'm only around the corner from them now, so that's kind of easy. Um, and... There's some bits and pieces I want to crack on with in the boat. Uh, I've got a couple of days here before uh, I've got the girls again. So, um, yeah, that'll be my plan. So, um, firstly, though, I'd like to say thank you so much to everyone um, for your lovely comments about uh, Carol's video on Christmas Day. I've spoken with Carol now. Um, she didn't watch it immediately. Actually, she didn't watch it for quite a while because um, she had a really bad migraine and basically couldn't look at anything bright like a television so um she has now seen it although she hasn't seen it in its entirety because she can't quite get all the way through it so i think she uh, she's watched it in kind of little blocks um and uh, needless to say she's kind of been rather blown away by it um as were many of you uh and I was, I was watching it on Christmas Day with my sister and my mum and dad and my sister, my mum and sister were in like floods of tears. So sorry for making so many people cry on Christmas Day. That certainly was not the intention whatsoever. Um, but uh, it's so nice, though, that so many people have been able to put a put a picture to a name or a face to a name, uh, which is great. So, um, yeah, I really I really kind of enjoyed putting that one together. So thank you so much for everyone to, uh, for, who contributed um, and I mean look you didn't get much warning it was a it was a bit tricky um, as I said it, it was uh, Carol basically watches everything she reads everything it was not easy to engineer that particular video um, uh, the only way of doing it um, and for those that saw the video um, the request video you'll know how it all happened but for those of you that didn't see that and only about a third of the audience saw it so only about 2,000 people saw it so what happened was um whenever it was the day before Christmas Eve I think it was I was going down to see Carol um I basically made a three minute video basically saying I'm going to see Carol when I get to her front door I'm going to post this video which basically says can you please send me a clip of you wishing Carol a Merry Christmas with something Christmassy behind you. Um, preferably say where you are, what your name is, where you're from, whatever, but you know, do whatever basically, as long as it's in the landscape. So everyone apart from Phil did it. So uh, Phil, you're in my bad books. Um, and so, um, and the idea was when I was, when I left Carol's house, I would then delete the video. And if Carol, so whilst I was there with her, um, if she saw something come up on her phone or whatever, I'd just kind of take her phone away or, or just make sure she didn't watch it, basically. Um, and I was just praying as many people saw it as, as, as they could. Um, I have this mental thing of the hunt of the first hour brigade. Um, there's a whole bunch of people that basically watch it within the first hour, no matter what time I put it up. Um, there was a few surprises who are part of the first hour brigade brigade i'll uh I'll, I'll say that um but yeah so i got about 50 maybe 40 responses kind of pretty quickly so i thought brilliant there's there's enough there to get on with um and um so i you know i kind of feel bad that not everyone got a chance to do it but on the other hand it was the only way i could have engineered that way to to, to happen so um um, but yeah, it was just, it was just brilliant. But as I said, it's really nice that I'd be able to put a, put a, uh, face to a name. Um, cause one of the people on there, Nigel and Lynn, um, they were telling me that one of the things they're doing is they're, um, is putting a door up in their, in their boat. And I was thinking that's something I need to do. So now you know who they are. So, um, my plan tomorrow, once my parents have left, so I think they're coming on for a drink or whatever. So um i'm all well equipped thanks to carol um my plan after that is then to go to well basically get some board and make up a door for the for the bathroom i've got no idea really what i'm going to do i'm just going to mock it up in my head tonight and go shopping tomorrow the boat's in presentation mode once again my new mat oh 
There's another mat. Check that out. So here we go. Fire's lit, so it's nice and warm for them. Velour upholstery. Check. Candles lit. Check. Okay, can't do anything about that. Here we go. So yeah, in good shape. Lights off. Well, mum and dad thought the boat looked really nice. Um, yeah, that was all, uh, all very good. Thumbs up all round. Now I've come to uh, buy some board for the bathroom door. And I reckon I'm gonna use these solid wood kind of glued edge panels. I've got some uh, panel boards here that my sister got me for Christmas. Well, she didn't really. She got me some B&Q vouchers, which I have exchanged for some of this. Um, this is knotty square edged pine and this is for the bathroom door. So my plan is to have a folding door with a seam kind of down this side here and a bit that folds in here and then it's going to fold into the recess here which is about I've got about 40 centimeters to play with here. Uh, what I want it to do is, is to occupy this space I'm going to have to have some kind of stopper kind of on that bit of a wall um, so I need to obviously take into account the angle of the ceiling and stuff that's the only cut I've got to do and then this one here that's going to be a bit of a few cuts but that should be all right and then I've got a piano hinge to go in the middle of it and then a couple of hinges on that side should be uh, relatively straightforward the reason I've gone for knotty pine as opposed to clear pine is because well there's quite a lot of it and it's quite boring so I thought a few knots will make it slightly more interesting so I've just got to choose the um the best side I think that'll be the facing side so I've just got to cut this now right um so this is going to be the facing side I think it looks slightly nicer with the knots and stuff um so yeah, that's the tall end, which is going to go up to the hair. It's going to give me a bit of clearance so I can get a bit of trim on the top. I've put a slight curve in it, ever so slightly, so it takes into account the didn't want a straight edge, even though there's going to be a bit of trim on it anyway, so you're probably not going to see it. Right, let's see how this goes. Okay, so that'll be in there like that. And then another piece there, kind of occupying that space. And that'll hinge back into there and the other one will be on the other side of it of which there's plenty of space oh yeah that's good yeah I'm happy with that result doesn't protrude into the shower too much at all actually it doesn't at all that's fantastic all right uh, I think the next piece though is going to be slightly trickier. That's definitely the easier of the two. Right, so I'm putting the hinges now on this kind of the, the, the big door just so I can hang that and then maybe work out the measurements from that. Um, and there's quite a variety of ways I can hinge this on different sides of the upright and stuff. But I'm going for a way that basically 
from inside the main bit of the cabin, you can't see the door. So um, that's my plan. Right, let's see what happens with this. Give that a go. I need to kind of prop it up on something on the bottom because I need there to be a little gap. Not much. Maybe five and a half mil. Let's see what that looks like. Yeah, I think that'll work. Right, I'm trying to put the door in now. I put the uh, I put some little kind of spaces in. This is testing my patience somewhat. Okay, don't move. Well, that works. Nice. It doesn't look the best from inside, I'll be honest with you. But the important thing is that when it is closed, from in here, when I put that bit of trim on there, that'll look all right. Bit of trim on the ceiling. Finish that off a little bit. Yeah, happy days. Right, cup of tea. Right, so now it becomes complicated for two reasons. The first complication is finding somewhere to put this. Uh, the first complication is the piano hinges. Uh, where I said hinge. So firstly, I got two, but they're both too long together. One isn't long enough, so I'm gonna have to cut one. I don't know if you can, if it then the rod falls out and all falls apart. So that will be a mystery we'll discover. Um, the other issue I've got is I've now got to cut out these measurements here, but then I've got to trim back some of this board so that it hides the piano hinge. And there's a few different ways of doing that, but once you've done it, you can't do it again. So um, this will be one of those cases of like measuring loads of times and then cutting once, and that's not really my forte, if I'm honest. Let's give it a go.
rough sanded this to see how it kind of fits together a bit. But... Well, that's going to be it in its. Well, I'm hoping that'll be it in its closed position. The only thing is, obviously, there's quite a big gap here where my fingers are here. I could I could fix that by putting a stopper in there, which would hide it basically, and give it to something to stop against. Um, the other thing I could do is re reluctantly uh, replace this with another 40 mil board like that one, um, and then shape it to the side of the boat, which, well, I could do one day, but for the moment this will probably be all right just with a gap. It's only really, you know, to kind of give Arthur some privacy. Okay, now I've got the <clears throat> tricky challenge of working out how the hell to put on these piano hinges. These are fiddly little things because they, you know, look at them, all long and whippy. Um, but they're really kind of easy to use once they're in place. Um, and they've got quite a lot of movement to them. So I'm hoping I can get away with just putting them on the outside. Well, you know, essentially on the inside because it doesn't have to fold perfectly flush when it's closed. There's quite a gap in there. The issue with piano hinges is the way they mount the holes. So they mount them opposite one another, which means if you've got two screws in there, which they obviously would have to have, then when you close it, there's quite a big gap. And if you can imagine that's the hinge end, so at the other end of the board, it's gonna be exaggerated, or well, that angle carries on basically. So what I'm gonna do is, because if I take one of these out and then close it, the top of that head of that screw, I mean, these are, these are only eight, 16 screws, 16 mil screws. So you're not gonna go for much, anything much smaller than that anyway. So the head of that counter sunk screw fits into that bit there. So it, fold, it closes nice and securely. So what that means is on this side here, I'm gonna have to drill out and then countersink holes, basically not opposite where these screws are gonna be. Well, all of these shavings are because I've had to take out, when you're doing a hinged door, you've got to take out a bit of a recess so the door kind of has got a bit more room to open. Um, so the idea is that on the facing side here, it's flush and there's no gap all the way down, but down there, there's a gap big enough to take, well, some of that basically. So hopefully it just aids the closing of the door. That's the plan, I'll see how it goes. Right, I haven't screwed in all of these. I've, in fairness, I've hardly done any at all. I've probably done 10 in total. I just want to see if it kind of works. And if the door actually folds properly. Oh, here we go. Yeah. Oh, yes. Oh, spot on. Oh, get in there. That's nice. So that's the bit you'll see when you're walking from the bedroom through to the saloon. But that's fine. I don't think it needs both of them on. I reckon one's all right. I sort of looks like hung up. I'll get in. Right. So I'm going to take it all apart anyway, because I need to varnish it and sand it all back and stuff. The actual positioning of these hinges might take a bit of a uh, tweaking, but Let's see how we get on. Well, 
that works, that's good. Kind of expected it to. Now the moment of truth. Oh, yeah, that's all right. It's catching a little bit on the ceiling. I need to round that bit off. Okay, that's pretty straightforward. Other than that, that works. Yeah, I'm well happy with that. Got a hole here for the boxing to go through, for the pipe work, which basically comes out 50 mil and up 10, 100 mil. And that folds back into the recess there. If I move that out of the way, that's where it folds back to. So hopefully you can't see it from the galley at all. No, you can't. That's totally brilliant. Right, so this is one of those situations where I haven't got the right tool for the job. Um, I need to trim this down a little bit, but my metal blade hacksaw is bust. Um, so the only thing I've got with a metal blade is for this um, and this is not really designed for cutting something like this. There's no nice way of holding anything but it's kind of all I've got. Um, so I'm going to give it a go. Oh gosh, right, okay. Let's see uh, what I've got to do here. I'll take it off. Kind of in the middle of those two. Um, and what did I say? In the middle of those two. Oh, oh no, that's not very nice. It's going to be no better, is it? Oh, should I do it in there? Oh yeah, I can clamp it in there. Ah. Oh, that's where you're meant to put the thing, in that gap. Right, okay. Uh, no, that's not going to work. I need some proper way of doing this. Okay. through the big bit now it's just got to get through the other bit I've done a little test um, using the bry wax on that bit there and the Danish oil on this bit here and um, this feels much nicer and still brings out some of the grain granted it's not exactly the same pattern so it's hard to work out this goes on much easier it's much much simpler to apply but doesn't leave us anywhere near as nice finish this obviously is a lot tougher to apply although dries a lot quicker although I've got hardly any of that left so um, I don't know if there's gonna be enough so I'm gonna start with the facing sides yeah this um, 
the wax is definitely the way to go. It's important to treat the timber on the boat because it protects it. And this pine is a bit soft, to be honest. So um, the wax really hardens the timber. It makes it much stronger, um, but also kind of more resilient to back, you know, bashes and knocks and stuff, which no doubt they're going to get. So uh, the only problem is I've got a lot of sanding to do, like a hell of a lot, because um, this... Uh, yeah, this um, wax just basically goes on really nicely if it's a really decent surface. So <coughs> I'm going to spend the next couple hours basically sanding down this stuff. Um, my plan tomorrow, I've got a few things to do during the day and then tomorrow night I'm back on, or tomorrow afternoon, kind of back on the boat. <coughs> I'll hopefully finish these doors. Um, I've got to do something on the side of the for, for the door for it to close properly and something on the ceiling for it to close against um, will be the plan. But the piano hinges work really well. So um, I've just got to kind of drill them out as well. So yeah, there's a few things to do to finish that, but I'm well happy with how that's come about. It's um, yeah, decent that is. The other thing why I wanted it to look pretty decent is because, um, well, I'll get a bit of a confession to make. Um, I spend most of the time sleeping in the dinette certainly in winter uh, because it's much warmer near the fire so in this i was thinking i don't really want a full door there because i don't want to block the heat but the reality is i'm i'm not sleeping in the bedroom obviously i would do if the kids were on board and if the kids were on board i'd manage the heat in a way that it's kind of toasty all the way through the boat but the way i kind of live at the moment it's some you know it's kind of the fire is not always on uh, certainly over the last few days and stuff so um, but otherwise I spent, yeah, I sleep in the dinette. So um, this door will mean that I can block off that and keep, and don't have to waste the heat going all the way through the boat. I can just kind of keep this area nice and toasty. So it'd be good if this was kind of nice to look at, which, um, yeah, I reckon once I put a wax on, it will be. The other thing is, is that the wax gives it a, a, a really decent shine. Um, once you certainly kind of buff it up, it gives it a decent shine. Whereas that, that um, Danish oil doesn't seem to at all. It's kind of brought it out and made it smoothish, but there's definitely no shine to it, not in the same way as the wax. So um, in a way, I wish I'd done that in wax and not Danish oil now. I don't know, maybe you don't want that to be shiny. But anyway, I want this to have a bit of a shine because it's, well, I don't know. Just looks decent in the bed, so I thought I might as well do the same thing on this stuff. Anyway, that'll be my plan for tomorrow. Hope you guys are well. See you then. Bye-bye.